So we're going to start in Sukhasana, so easy seated position. So literally, whatever is an easy seated position for you, you do not have to sit cross-legged. Karen is using one of those Zafus, the little grey cushions. If anybody, green cushions even, anybody wants one of those. Let me get one for you, Jan, just because it's a bit more comfy. You can just try everything out and see what you like. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. But you, you really don't have to have your legs crossed at all. But if you have got your legs crossed, uncross them and do them the other way. <laughs> because we all naturally always put the same one in the front. Um, so it's just to try and keep that balance into the body. So this is where we're going to arrive for the practice today. So literally, just want you to find a really nice tall spine. So think about the grounding parts of your body that are connected to either the cushion beneath you or the mat beneath you. And then lengthen the whole of your spine up from there. So really reach tall with the crown of your head. Slightly draw your chin in to lengthen out the back of the neck. Let the shoulders soften down. Nice and broad across your collarbones. And if you're comfortable to close the eyes, maybe do so. And then just tune into your breath. So as always, I invite you to breathe in and out through the nose. If for any reason that's not accessible or comfortable for you tonight, if you know you can use the mouth. Or otherwise, just start to feel the breath as it enters into the nose and down into the body, and then travels back up the body and back out through the nose. We want to invite that breath to deepen and slow down. And when I say deepen, that doesn't mean you have to take a huge, great gust of air into the body. Just invite it to take up a little bit more room. So breathing all the way down into your abdomen, into your pelvic floor space, and then breathing up and out from there, back out through the nose. So just invite the breath to not just sit in the chest, but move around in the body, down towards the ground, and then back up and out. Take this as an opportunity to kind of set your intention for your practice today, what we call a sankalpa. That might just be to just spend the next hour in a bit of quiet and a bit of space for you, a bit of dedicated time for your mind and your body, or it may be something more specific. Whatever resonates for you, just take an opportunity to think about what brings you here on the mat this evening. Apart from the fact that you missed me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. If you've got the eyes closed, just gently start to open the eyes again. We're going to just start to access our Anahata Chakra, this heart space here. We're going to just do some really gentle tapping. So you've got two options. You can place your hand onto your heart space and tap onto your hand, which is a softer version. Or you can just gently take the fingers and just gently start to tap on the sternum here. We're just stimulating the immune system, stimulating the heart space, but we're also kind of waking up this part of the body. This is the prana region of our body where breath goes, and where your breath goes, your energy flows. So we want to invite that energy to kind of move around the body a little bit, and then just get things starting to move and stimulate, but also connecting that touch with the heart space so that we can really keep our focus here just breathe gently you don't have to tap hard and you can do it like you're playing a piano a little rhythm or just softly up and down whatever feels right for you side to side round in circles make your voice sound funny and just do a few more here and just see if you feel when you tap if anywhere feels slightly more tender than somewhere else slightly more sensitive than something else there's no judgment just observe feeling. Okay, two more breaths here, in and out through the nose. Notice also how aggressively you're tapping yourself. Because <laughs> that may tell you something about where you're at right now. <laughs> I'm purely saying that because I just noticed I was kind of whacking my chest quite hard. <laughs> All right, release that down. Just roll out through the wrist a little bit. Take a few deep breaths in. Breathe it out. One more of those. And then breathe it out. Okay, we're going to stay seated, but we're going to come into Baddha Konasana, which is when we bring the soles of the feet together. 
If you feel you want to sit on the flat rock, as Vicky is nicely demonstrating here, it can sometimes help with just tilting that pelvis forward. Sometimes we end up sort of sitting like this and rounding through the lumbar, which is not what we want. Sometimes sitting on the edge of a brick can just help lift you up or you're already on a cushion, obviously you've got the same thing. But imagine you're kind of tilting your pubic bone down towards the ground and lengthening up through your spine and the crown of your head. So you've got a really nice long line and there's plenty of room for your breath to move up and down the body. How close your feet are to your body is on you guys. I don't want you to put a lot of tension or strain or discomfort. I want you to be able to relax. So if that means taking your feet slightly further out, then take the feet slightly further out. We're gonna be here for a few minutes and do some neck circles and some shoulder rotations. If you start to get really uncomfortable in the hips, then just edge those feet out a little bit more. So when you're ready, we're going to just start by rotating the neck round. You place your hands wherever it's comfortable. We're just going to bring right ear to right shoulder. Don't lift the right shoulder up, just bring the ear towards the shoulder. And then lift it back up to neutral and then over to the left. Lift it back up to neutral, back over to the right. Inhale back up and then over to the left. Bring it back up, head over heart, head over pelvis, and then just draw your chin in towards your chest. So we start to lengthen out the cervical spine at the back of your neck. How close you bring that chin in, again, is dependent on you. How you feel tonight, just look after yourself. Work within the range of your own body and energy today. Try to keep inviting the shoulders to soften. And then we're gonna keep the chin low and just take it across to the shoulder on the right, back into the middle, across to the shoulder on the left. And then just move like this with your breath. So it's an inhale back to center and it's an exhale left to right. And once you've done it one more time each side, just bring the head back into a neutral position. And we're gonna slightly tilt the chin up towards the sky. Then just start to open into the throat chakra here in the front of the heart space. You keep drawing the shoulder blades down, lift the chin up. You don't have to flip the top of your head back, just lengthen out through the front. And then again, keep your head back and then tilt your head, ear over to the right, back to centre, over to the left, back to centre, one more each side. Keeping that chin tilted, shoulders soft. Okay, breathe back and then we're just going to turn the head to the right. Bring it back to the middle, turn it to the left. Bring it back to the middle, one more each side. God, if I wasn't feeling dizzy already, this is a great thing. <laughs> Until I'm sitting down. All right, good stuff. Just release it and then we're gonna shrug into the shoulders. So just bring them up, draw them down and back. Up, squeeze the shoulder blades and back. Couple more here. If you feel more comfortable placing your hands on your shoulders, you can, and then you can just lift the elbows up and swing them around, whatever gives you better range of movement. Just mobilize into those shoulders. Remember, if you're starting to feel it in your hips, you can always take the feet a little bit further away from the body. And then whatever direction you were going, just swap it and bring it the other way. So is everybody all right temperature-wise with the aircon on? When we first came in, it was blowing out hot air, and that was nice, wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> Look what's cosy in here. <laughs> All right, well done, shake it out. We're gonna come over onto our hands and our knees. So if anybody's got sensitive knees today or just wants a bit of padding, you can double up your mat, just fold it so you've got a bit extra underneath your knees. Otherwise, just come onto your hands and to your knees. You want the hands underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips. Tops of feet pressing down onto the ground and just a gentle drawing in of the navel to the spine. We don't want it to affect the breath. We want to just feel that we've got a little bit of support for the lower back there. Don't move your hands, but as you exhale, press your hips back towards your heels. As you start to inhale, really round your spine and draw your tummy in towards your back. So you're coming into an arch cat shape here. And then exhale, just back into a neutral all fours. So we're gonna do that a few times. Inhale where we are. 
Exhale, press your hips back towards your heels. Inhale, come up, rounding through the spine into that cat position. And then exhale, just return it back to neutral. Breathe it in. Exhale, hips back to heels. Inhale, round it through. Exhale, release it back into neutral. Inhale, one more time. Exhale, squeeze it back. We're just going to take a pause here, guys. So just press the hips as far back towards your heels as feels comfortable for you. If you want to rest the head down, you can. Otherwise, just keep pushing back with the hands. Soft into the shoulder blades. One more breath here. And then inhale back into that rounding position, into that cat space between the shoulder blades. Exhale, come back into all fours. We're going to tuck those toes. And we're going to just walk our hands back towards our knees. And then just come over onto the ball joints of your feet and your toes. That's it. It's like a little mini squat. And then we're slowly going to come up to stand from here. So if you feel you need to take your feet wider, please do. And then you're slowly going to just press up through your hips. Keep your knees bent as much as you need to. And then slowly start to lift the upper body. Reach your arms up with you. Come to a standing position. Urdhva has stastana, arms above you. And then exhale, just let your hands come down. Inhale, reach the arms all the way back up. And then exhale, we're going to come into a dangle here. I'm not going to be able to stay here, so I'm just going to show you and then come out. But you want to press down through your heels, lift your hips, hands onto opposite elbows, and then just slowly sway one side to the other. Bend your knees as much as you need to here. It's almost like you're trying to get your abdomen, your lower abdomen, so from your belly button to your pubic bone, to connect to your thighs. So bend your knees as much as you need to to try and invite that to access. Opening across the shoulders into the spine, so let the head really relax, the back of the neck relax. Let the weight of your upper body and your head help with that opening into your vertebrae and into your spine. I'm going to be here for a few more breaths to so just keep rolling through. If anyone's starting to feel dizzy, by all means, don't move. Just stay where you are. And then we're going to come up really slowly, guys. So try and track your eyes on the mat and then the wall or the window or whatever is in front of you to bring yourself up with some grounded vision and just come all the way back up to a standing position. Okay, take a minute to just feel grounded in your feet. Get your balance, feel supported. We're going to come into Malasana, but I'm going to give you some options. Can I just borrow your brick, please? Yeah. So you can use a flat brick and pop the backs of your heels onto this flat brick, flat brick, and then we're going to sit down. How far down you come is going to vary for all of us. And you don't have to come this far down at all. You might want to kind of sit lower like that, or you don't have the brick, or you can just kind of kneel and place your hands on the ground like this. So there's kind of three options there for you. So Malasana without the brick, we sit down. Malasana with the brick, your heels are on the brick, you sit down to wherever feels comfortable. No brick and no sitting all the way down, just come into a squat position. We're gonna come up and down a few times and then we're gonna pause for a minute or so in it. So, <laughs> Maybe you want to start just squatting in and out first rather than coming all the way down. Just see what feels right for you. So let's bring our hands to our heart space. Take the feet wide enough. Probably a little bit wider than hip width apart. Maybe slightly turned out. Breathe in nice and tall. And then exhale, slowly start to bend down. Good knee creaks happening. <laughs> and then inhale, press and lift yourself back up. So we've got three more of those. Exhale, come down. It's not about how far down you go, guys. We're just mobilizing into those hips, building a bit of strength and balance into the body. Two more. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, take it up. Last one. We're going to pause on this one, so make sure you get yourself into a comfortable place. Exhale, bring yourself down. If you want, you take the backs of the arms to the inside of the knees. You do not have to do this. You can place your hands on your thighs if you feel more comfortable with your hands resting on your thighs. But whichever option you're choosing, let's try and be nice and long in the upper body. So if I turn myself sideways, we don't want to be like this. We 
we want to be really nice and long, pressing the sit bones down and the spine nice and long. Or if you're in a more of a half squat, still keep the shoulders and the chest lifted, heart reaching forwards. Think about that space you're connecting to with the tapping. Keep it nice and open. Breathe. This is great for grounding and earthing. So use your breath to that purpose. Breathe all the way down towards the mat. Two more breaths here. Last one. Okay, we're going to make our way down to the mat. So just place the hands on the floor or just crouch yourself back down. We're going to come to a kneeling position. So again, if you want to double up your mat, feel free to do so. And Karen, you're going to be so pleased because we're doing a toe stretch. <laughs> okay, Janet, we've never done a toe stretch before. Just bear with me. You won't break your feet, I promise. <laughs> you want to spread all your toes down onto the mat. So the pads of your toes come all the way onto the mat. So you might need to help some of them out. And then you sit your hips back towards your heels like we did before. The hands can be on the ground, but we eventually want to start to get the hands to come back and then the head over the heart, the heart over the pelvis. We are going to be in this for a little while, guys, and we're going to do different things with the arms whilst we're in it. So find your place with it, trust it, breathe into it. If it starts to feel a bit much, you can just take a bit of the weight out off of those ankles come forwards a little bit. Okay, so the first pose we're going to take is um, the arms, as I showed you earlier, you might want to use a strap or not, but I'll demonstrate first and you can decide. So we're going to bring the left arm out, bend at the elbow and bring the left arm up the spine. And then the right arm extends up to the sky, bend at the elbow and the right hand reaches down to meet the left. You do not have to connect your fingers together. You can hold on to t-shirt or if anyone wants a strap, let me know and I can pop a strap in. Right, open the chest, draw the arm. So you want that top elbow to be facing up towards the sky rather than kind of coming down like this. So if you're finding it's making you round, use your t-shirt, use a strap, use anything else just to give you a little bit of space. Lift forward in that heart space, tall into your spine. Breathe. We're still in our toe stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay, release those hands, bring them down to the ground, untuck your toes, I'm going to be kind and let you come out each time. We're going to take a big O with the face, so we're just going to relax and release into the face. So you literally, like it says, just close the eyes, start and then make an O with your mouth and then open your eyes and look up. So you should feel a nice stretch along the front of the body. Uh, front of the face, sorry. And then release it back into your toe stretch. <laughs> so tuck those toes back in. We're going to do the opposite arm. Get yourself in the right position first. And then it's going to be right arm extends out, bend at the elbow, bring the right wrist up to the spine. Left arm reaches up towards the sky, bend the left elbow, connect left hand and right hand or t-shirt or strap or whatever works for you. Try not to tilt forward, try and keep those shoulders nice and open, heart nice and open, elbows pointing up towards the sky rather than out to the side on a wonk. Your elbow is not my eye. <laughs> <laughs> well done guys. A little bit longer. Gently draw navel to spine. Two more breaths. Well done, release. Put the hands down, tap the feet out. We're going to take that big O again before we go into a different arm position. So just come back to a kneeling position. Open the mouth into a big O and then look up. it off so we're coming back into the toe stretch we've got one more arm position left and right with a big o in between you've got this 
So I'm going to face you to demonstrate this one. We're coming into Garudasana arms. So we're going to start with the right arm extending out in front of us. The left elbow is coming into the right elbow crease and then we bend the arms towards us. This may be where you go or perhaps you can interlace around the wrist and the palms, but that latter bit doesn't matter. It's more this connectivity between the elbows. If that doesn't happen for you, just wrap your hands around your shoulders and then we lift the elbows up. Right arm is underneath, left arm is on top. Lift the elbows up in your toe stretch. You can do it! <laughs> so lift those elbows up. So we want to feel space between these shoulders. Feel like your shoulder blades are coming apart from each other, almost round towards the front of your body. Keep lifting the elbows, opening into that shoulder space. How's your toes? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think about two things. <laughs> That's the point, this is all distraction, right? Exhale, release it off, come back, tap the top of your feet. All right, come into your big O when you're ready. So come to kneel. Open the mouth into that nice O shape. Lift the gaze up towards the sky. This feels really weird in my face right now. Okay, back in. Hello, toes. <laughs> Is this the last time we're saying hello to our toes? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah it is. <laughs> and then it's going to be left arm underneath this time, right arm comes on top, cross it over, lift it up. But pay attention to whether it feels different one side to the other. We want to keep lifting those elbows as high as we can to really make some space across the shoulders at the back of the body. Try not to sort of crumble into your lower back, keep that navel drawn into the spine, keep the spine nice and long. Breathe easy. I haven't even thought about my toes. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't stretched in a while. Oh, it's okay, we're coming off them in a sec. Alright, release it out. Well done, everybody. Just tap them off. Ooh. I actually had written another two arm movements, but <laughs> I'm going to do them without the toe stretching. Thank at least you. Two <laughs> You're not allowed to take another two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just come back to a kneel if that's comfortable for you. If it's not comfortable for you, take the legs out in front of you. They don't need to be underneath your body necessarily. So the last two that we're going to take is just interlace the fingers, press the palms up towards the sky, drop your shoulders and push up with the hands. Keep the head over the heart, the heart over the pelvis, the spine nice and long and really lengthen forwards, well, not forwards, upwards, should I say. So gently draw your navel into spine, but we're keeping nice and long in the upper body and in the side body. Well done, guys, a little bit longer. Notice if those shoulders are sneaking up around your ears, if they are, just soften them down. And then we'll just shrug the shoulders. We won't do that last one today. I'll let you off. <laughs> Whatever you need to do, just to put a mobility back into your shoulders. And then if you're not already seated, just come into a bit of a seat. And we're just going to give our feet a bit of love. <laughs> so just give them a little rub. Into those toes, around the joints. Into the, the instep of the foot. Wherever you feel like it's going to feel good, just give them a little rub before we come into our next few poses. So the next few, we're going to hold for that little bit longer, get more into the yin um, stillness of the practice. The first one we're going to come into is our happy baby pose. So we're going to want to come onto our backs. Make sure there's enough room behind you to lay the body down. Make sure the head is supported and the back of your neck is long. So we don't want crunch neck and the chin up towards the spine. We want chin down towards chest and the back of the neck is nice and long. 
You may want to strap for this. You can decide depending on where you feel you are at with your body today. And we're going to just draw the knees in towards the chest. That's where we start. So just bringing the knees in towards the chest. Give them a bit of a hug. Maybe rock out side to side into your lower back. Okay, then you're going to keep your knees in towards your chest, but take them slightly wider. So they're more sort of by your ribs than they are next to each other. And then you're going to just bend at the knees so that you extend the soles of the feet up towards the sky. Like a little dead bug. And then from here, you're either going to place your hands on your shins, your calves, or the tops of your feet, or the bottoms of the feet, technically. But we want to keep as much of the lower back and the sit bones on the mat as possible. So try not to lift up with the butt. Try and keep it pressed down towards the ground. The purpose of the placement of your hands and your legs is just to add a little bit of gravity into these hip joints. We want to keep the knees towards the body and slightly wider than close together just to give us room in that hip space. And then we stay here. So think about the length of your back of your neck. Think about opening into the hips, into the groins, releasing the lower back down towards the ground. If anything feels like it's shaking or it's a bit uncomfortable, maybe change your hand position. Just explore and find a place that you can be comfortable in to stay here for a little bit longer. Really feel the breath with your ribs against the mat beneath you where you're breathing and you're pressing the back down into the mat. It's one of the rare poses where the lower lumbar is also flattened out into the back. That can feel quite nice and offer a sense of release. Think about softening into the face as well and continuing to stay connected to the breath. And just be grateful your toes are not on the mat. <laughs> and you can wiggle them with free abandon. Okay, anybody wants to rock side to side in this pose, you can. Just be mindful of your neighbor if you get a bit carried away. <laughs> and just massaging into your lower back a little bit can be quite nice. chose to wave side to side, just bring yourself back to stillness just for a few more rounds of breath here. Last breath in and out. And then just release your feet back down towards the ground. We're going to take the feet as wide as the mat. Soles of feet on the ground, knees up. Arms come out to shoulder height, or if you've got a neighbor right next to you and you need to keep the elbows bent, then keep the elbows bent. We're gonna just windscreen wipe for the legs left to right. So you keep them as wide as the mat. When you inhale, your knees are up towards the sky as they are now. And when you exhale, you take both knees down to one side. I don't care which side you go, just sway and move with your own breath rhythm. So exhale, knees to one side. Inhale, bring them back up. Exhale over to the other side. Just keep flowing through this. Invite that top leg to be really heavy, generating sort of space in the outside of the hip as well as the inside. And just lengthening into the waist and the side body with each time you take those knees down. Keep the shoulders grounded. All right, whichever side you come to next, just take a pause here. Just let the legs be as heavy as you can. They're big muscles in our legs. They always want to be active and doing stuff. So really try and encourage them to relax and stop for a minute. Inhale, bring them back up and then take them over to the other side. Just pause for a couple of breaths there. Same thing, invite those legs to let go. Up. Inhale, knees back up. Okay, we're going to come into supine side bend. So that means a side bend laying on our backs. Jatara Paraviti Pajra, if you want the Sanskrit, which obviously all you beginners know. So we want the legs extended out along the mat. And you're going to keep your hips and your legs where they are for now. 
and you're going to shimmy your upper body over to the left hand side of the mat. So don't move your legs and hips yet, just move your shoulders and your upper body over to the left. Then take your left leg out to the side and then bring your right leg towards your left leg. But you want to keep your right butt cheek and your right hip down. So if you need to just shimmy about, move about a little bit to get the comfortable do, you're basically creating a bit of a banana shape with your body here. So the right side of your body is longer and the left side of your body is closing down. We're going to reach the arms up overhead so the knuckles are on the ground behind us. And then if you wish, you can take the left hand around the right wrist and just slightly add to the curve in your banana. If you do that, don't lift your right shoulder off the mat. Still keep the shoulders soft. The lengthening needs to come from the right foot all the way up to the right fingertips, but everything's still grounded on the mat beneath you. And then really use the breath to invite the space to happen. So all that connective tissue, all the muscles, all the cells in your body on that right side, just really feel them open up as you inhale and the rib cage expands, the waist lengthens. And then gently soften as you exhale and release the air, as well as let go of any tension in the side of the body. I'm going to be here for probably a good minute or so, so really try and find a place of comfort and explore space for yourself and your body. Position of your head is completely up to you, whatever feels comfortable. And if you feel like you've come to a place where you maybe got a little bit more room to move, then add a little bit more bend into your banana. Otherwise, stay connected, stay grounded. Let your mind just rest on your breath here. And you know the deal if your mind wanders away as it naturally does, just gently and kindly bring it back to rest on the breath. Invite that space to happen in the right side of the body. And that gentle closing down into the left side. Shoulder blades are grounded, sit bones are grounded, ankles and heels, knuckles and the head, all resting gently on the ground beneath you. It's just a little bit longer. You know it's your practice, your body. If you want to come out earlier, you can just release off. Otherwise, just stay here for a few more rounds of breath with me. Use that breath to create space. All right, well done. We're going to slowly release the arms first. So just let the arms come to wherever they naturally want to go. Let that right leg come back into the middle of the mat and then your left leg to join it. And then slowly shimmy your body back in. So this is a little test of your proprioception. See if you've managed to come back in a straight line in the middle of your mat or you're still kind of on the wonk. And just feel about, make yourself neutral. Take a moment to just stay here before we go to the other side. And then when you feel ready, hips and legs stay where they are to start. Shimmy the right Upper body over to the right, sorry guys. So shoulders over to the right, upper body over to the right. Then your right leg comes out. This is where we usually kick over water bottles, as I was about to. And then the left leg comes to meet it, keeping the left butt, left butt cheek and hips still down towards the ground. Starting to create that curve into the body. Arms reach up and overhead, knuckles down to the ground behind us. Option of right hand around left wrist, and just add a little bit more into that curve if you wish. You can also cross the left ankle over the right if you want to add a little bit more. But as I said, we want to keep that left butt cheek on the ground. So don't cross that ankle if that's not possible for you. And then really start to breathe into that space you've created on the left side of the body. And into that gently closing down into the right side of the body. Take your breath all the way from your toes up past your thigh and the outside of your IT band, into your hip joint, your waist, your ribs, your armpit, and right way up to your fingertips. And let that breath create space for you and your body, in between each and every rib and intercostal muscle there. 
into the tummy. But equally trying to relax all the parts of you that are connected to the earth, keep them grounded and relax everything else around them, including your face, your eyes, your mouth. Just keep breathing nice and deep. Taking a lateral flexion here into your spine. Which is great for the mobility and the health of your spine. It's not necessarily a movement that we do as often with the spine in day to day as we do extension and flexion. So this lateral flexion is great. Okay, we're gonna be here for a couple more breaths. Make them count nice and deep. Hold on, and then we just start by releasing the arms. Just let them go to wherever feels natural for you. Let the left leg come back into the center. Right leg come back to join it. Upper body shimmy back. So you just come back into, like you're coming into Shavasana, but we're not going into Shavasana just yet. So we just stacked all our joints, toes underneath the knees, hips above the knees, shoulders above the hips, head and neck just nice and long. And then we're going to come into a supine twist. So we're staying on our back, but we're going to come into a twist. Dynamic to start with and then pause. A bit like we did with the windscreen wipers with the legs. So when you feel ready, just place the soles of the feet onto the ground. Hands can be wherever feels comfortable for you to start with. We will take them out to the side in a moment. And then we're going to bring the knees back in towards the chest again. So give them a hug. Hold on to shins rather than knee joints and just hug those knees in. Rock out side to side if you know that feels good. And then when you finish that, just let the knees stay close to the chest and take your arms out to shoulder height. You can have the elbows bent if you need the space, otherwise extend them out with the palms facing up. With palms facing up, whether you've got elbows bent or not would be great. Okay, so we're the same as when we did the windscreen wipers with the legs. Our inhale space is where we are right now with the knees in towards the chest. We're all going to go the same way this time. So as we exhale, take your knees over to the left, but keep your shoulders down towards the ground. So we want to invite that right shoulder blade to stay down towards the mat. As you inhale, draw your navel to spine and bring your knees back in towards your chest. And then as you exhale, let the knees come over to the right. So this is your movement with your breath. Keep inviting the shoulders to ground down towards the ground. Inhale, knees come into chest. Exhale back over to the other side. We all breathe differently, so we're all going to move slightly different time. But just keep those fundamentals of the structure right in that you want to keep the shoulders down and you want to keep the knees coming in towards the chest so we're rotating around. This time, next time you come over, just take the knees slightly lower so they're almost in line with your hips. Just see how that feels different in the side of your body. Inhale, bring them back up. And then take them over to the other side at the same level. So more hip height than towards the chest. I find that a bit more wobbly myself. We're going to come back into where we were. This time, see if you can bring the knees even closer to your chest. And then over to the other side, still quite high up. Keep that shoulder down. Inhale back in. Exhale, keep them higher up. And then down on the other side. This time we come back into center, we're gonna pause. So you choose which of those hip directions felt more comfortable and accessible for you, and then you pause in that place. So maybe it was the hip level knees, maybe it was knees slightly higher, or maybe it was knees towards chest kind of more in the middle. And you wanna let those knees come down towards the ground and really invite that top leg to soften. So you're taking them back over to the left and you're pausing there. Right shoulder blades down to the ground. Breathe into the right side of the chest. If you need to move that top leg position so you're not stacked knees and ankles, do that so that you can release that top leg down more. I don't want you to build more tension in that hip joint or that leg. So just take it over because we're staying where we are. You have got props if you want to use them underneath your legs to enable the legs to relax rather than creating tension in those legs. So if you feel that the muscles are switched on and they're heavy, just make an adjustment that's gonna enable them to switch off. Could be putting a brick under your knees, 
could be changing the position of your top leg. Whatever works for you today, just invite that release to take place in the legs. just a little bit longer. Just keep breathing into it. Invite the space into the body. You've prepped for this with the side bend that you did earlier prior to this, so there's more space for your body to open up. If anybody feels so inclined that they want to, you can extend the right leg and reach for the big toe with your left peace fingers. You do not have to do this. This is just um, a variation might want to try if you feel so like inclined to do so today. Otherwise, just stay where you are, breathe and release. Right, we're all going to start to come back. So whatever you're doing with your legs, just bring the knees back together, bring the knees back into your chest, take a nice deep inhale here, and then on your exhale, we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So they come over to the right, good back kick, whoever that was. And then just move around to get yourself into a place where you can completely relax those legs and let them go. Shoulders down towards the ground. Release through the waist. Relax into the shoulders, into the face. And then just take your breath into the side of the body, into the hip joints, wherever it feels like it might benefit. Where you may feel sensations. Keep the face nice and soft. You have that option to extend that top leg if you want to. You could reach for the toe with your right piece fingers. Or just hang out exactly where you are. And just be mindful that when we're more still in these poses, the mind tends to want to get our attention. And that's where your practice comes in. Just keeping returning to the breath, breathing in and breathing out. Just return those legs back in. Knees come in towards the chest. We give them a hug. We rock out side to side if you want. And we're going to take that Vadakanasana that we did in a seated position at the beginning, but we're taking it lying down where we are now. So we start by placing the soles of the feet back onto the floor. And then you're going to take the knees out to the side and connect the soles of your feet together. So you're making a diamond shape into the legs. Again, with the position when we took it seated, the choice is yours as to how close those feet come towards your body, it's up to you. And then I'm just gonna give you some options with your hands. So you may wanna place one hand on your heart space, one hand on your abdomen. You might wanna put your hands back onto your heart and tap as we did at the beginning. Or you might wanna reach the arms overhead, knuckles to the ground, and just lengthen into the whole of the front body that feels what's going to serve you best right now. This is our last pose before we come into our Shavasana. So choose whatever arm or hand option you feel is going to be best for you for these last couple of minutes. Let the hips be heavy, let the knees be soft, the inside of the groins and the inner thighs just open and relax. Shoulders stay soft and grounded down onto the ground. You should have that natural curve in your lumbar spine now, your lower back. Keep the face nice and soft as well. Two 
tune into that breath, just breathing in, breathing out. So slowly going to just press the soles of the feet back into the ground, the knees come back up towards the sky. You're going to cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And then you've got options from here. So this might be exactly where you want to be and that's enough for you. Or you bring the left foot slightly closer to your body and you interlace your hands around the back of your left thigh. So you draw your left knee towards your body whilst inviting your right knee away from your Keep the shoulders soft, keep them grounded, keep the back of the neck long, chin towards chest. Flex into that right foot just to really activate into the outside of the right heel, um, right hip a little bit. Feel that stretch in the outside of your glutes on that right side. Okay, you're gonna release the arms away, keep the legs as they are. You're going to take a twist, as you just have been doing, but with your legs in this position. So I hope this isn't going to blow your minds. You basically want to take your left thigh down towards the ground, keeping your right ankle crossed over it. So your right foot is going to come towards the ground, and your left leg is coming over in a twist. Stay here just for a couple of breaths. Arm position is whatever feels comfortable for you and your shoulders. Okay, inhale, draw your navel to your spine. Press down into that left foot, lift the knee back up. Uncross the legs, place both feet back onto the ground. Just take any little adjustment into your hips and your pelvis before we do that on the other side. So we cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Stay here, or maybe you draw your right foot closer to the body, you interlace your hands through to the back of the right thigh, drawing the right leg in and the left leg away. Keep the shoulders soft, face soft. All right, one more breath here, then we're gonna come into that twist on this side. So in and out through the nose. Release the hands, take the arms to where it's comfortable, and then twist it over to the right side now. So the right thigh is coming down towards the ground, and the left foot may come down towards the ground too. And just a few breaths here. When you arrive at your next inhale, you use it to draw your navel to your spine, your legs back up. Uncross the legs, do anything you need to do before we come into Shavasana now. So if you need to take a little rock, a little stretch out into the legs, whatever feels comfortable for you. And then when you feel ready, just extend the legs down along the mat. Choose a position with your arms that means your arms aren't right next to your body. Just have the palms facing up, shoulders nice and soft, and then close down the eyes. Tune the mind into the breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. I'm going to take you through a scan of the body, starting at the toes, traveling all the way up to the head. Just listen to the sound of my voice. And each part of the body as we visit it, just invite it to relax and release and let go a little. I want to invite you to take your attention to your toes on your right foot, the sole of your right foot and your heel, and the top of your right foot and in between each and every toe. And then across to your left hand, 
palm of your hand, the back of your hand, each joint, fingertip, fingernail, knuckle. And then across to your right knee, down to your right ankle and calf, relaxing into the calf muscle and the shin. From the lower right leg across to your left hand, fingers, knuckles, palm, thumb, and then down to your left foot, the toe joints, the space between your toes, the ball joints and heel, instep and the top of your foot. From your left foot to your right hip, softening into the muscles in the top of your right leg and around the back of your knee and the top of your kneecap. And then across from your right knee to your left hip, softening into the top of your left thigh, the back of your knee, the top of your knee. From your left knee, going across to your pelvis, the back of your hips, sit bones, abdomen, and then up to your right shoulder, shoulder blade in the front of your shoulder, across to your left rib cage, and then to the right waist. into your right rib cage, left shoulder, and left waist. From the tips of your toes, the whole of your legs, and the top of your upper body, shoulders to hips. And then we travel down from the right shoulder across the top of the right arm to the bend and crease of your elbow and your forearm across to the top of your left arm, elbow and forearm. From the tips of your fingers all the way up to your shoulders. Release and relax. And then travel to the sides of your neck and the back of your neck. Just behind your earlobes and around the back of the head. Across the top of your skull right ear and left ear and then begin to soften across your forehead make space between your eyebrows and soften all the tiny muscles around your eyes the right cheek the left cheek the bridge of your nose to the tip of your nose and all the tiny muscles around your mouth soften your jaw Relax the tongue. From the crown of your head all the way down to the very tips of your toes. And from the tips of the toes to the crown of your head. Relax. Release. And let go. Stay here in this sense of space and quiet for a few more breaths. Letting the breath flow naturally, the body feel heavy and soft and light. 